Can we guess the first product your favorite company ever made? Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Now anybody who was alive in 2007 knows you were not cool if you weren't wearing a moose on your shirt that was so tight it cut off all circulation to your nips. I'm talking Abercrombie and Fitch, folks. Uh -huh. Now what was your stance on the A&F back in the day? Um, I, I was more of a cheaper American Eagle guy. Oh, American guy. Eagle, yeah. Cause I mean, the shirtless buff dudes with yeah. like, that smelled like Abercrombie at the, yeah. and like I never got past those well, guys, also, literally. The lights were on in American Eagle. So, yes. So you could, I was like, hey, I can see what I'm buying. I can see the clothes, I can see that the price tags are a little men? more reasonable. Okay, well did you know that when Abercrombie, and I can't say the word, Ab Abercrombie? Abercrombie? Abercrombie and Fitch. It started over a century ago. They actually started as a sporting goods company that marketed to affluent outdoorsmen, selling things like fishing poles and rifles to stuffy aristocrats. Here's a picture of a vintage a &F rifle that a nobleman on safari may have used. Okay, so there, look at that. Abercrombie, it was kind of like Remington or Bass Pro Shops. It was the, yeah, the very first Bass Pro Shops. Hmm. Well, as it turns out, a lot of giant corporations we know for selling specific products today actually started by selling something wildly different at first, and it's gonna be up to us, Rhett, yeah. working together, yes. like Abercrombie and, and Fitch, Fitch. <laughs> to guess what those items were. It's time for, what if Fisher Price once sold big shiny knives? Would it be no surprise, or would it fill you with strife? Stevie is going to school us on a variety of major companies whose first ever products are incredibly different from the kind of product that we associate with them today. And we're gonna guess what that product was. And much like a barbershop during wartime, we're gonna be given two options. Cool. The best part is uh, we have that product or a close recreation of the product right here hidden in this box. Well, it's not hidden now. Because we're oh, oh, hey, history. Link. High five. Hey. Oh, oh, okay, that didn't work too well. Okay, if we need help guessing, we have three lifelines available, and once you use a lifeline, you can't use it again. Mm -mm. We can, one, stick it, where we get to poke the item just one time. Two, we can sniff it, where we take a big old whiff of the inside of the box. I'm or demonstrating three, this so you understand what he means. Swipe it, we can swipe a metal detector over the box and see if that helps us at beep, all. Beep. If we get uh, four or more uh, correct, we get to win a framed photo of the very first time we ever won a game on Good Mythical Morning. What is that gonna be? And if we lose, we get a framed photo of our very first loss. Hmm. Huh, that'll be upsetting. <laughs> Let's play. First up is a fast food joint you both know all too well. Before they were the big boss of fire sauce, Taco Bell built its fast food kingdom by selling one particular item. Did they begin as a modest little hot dog stand or a modest little kebab stand? This is hot so dog strange. Or kebab. Were they called Taco Bell, or are you not going to answer that question? I am not going to answer that question. See, Rhett, we we got the little tour at the Taco Bell headquarters at one time. With the timeline in the hallway. The timeline in the hallway. I think they they took this part out of the timeline. Because we get to we we're working together here, and I have this flag that we're going to place. Let's see which one do I have. I got the hot. I dog. got the kebabs. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's a hot dog. It's gotta man. be a hot dog. I, I mean, back they, in, they started so long ago. Don't you remember that we had a conversation about, man, they started with hot dogs? Mm, well, if you remember that, you definitely I, should put I, the flag on it. Okay, because so I don't. We think it's hot dogs. I mean, it, kebabs it, it, is so specialized. Yeah, it makes more sense that you, that you would start with hot dogs and maybe move on to tacos. Taco Bell founder Glenn Bell opened a small hot dog stand in San Bernardino, California in 1946. Once Bell introduced tacos to his menu, they became such a smash hit, he switched focus and got rid of the hot dogs altogether. Screw those hot dogs. But did he call it Taco Bell? That couldn't have made any sense. Next, we've got Lego, the company that quite literally built an empire. Way back when Lego was just another word to shake the neighborhood dog off your ankle. Ha! <laughs> Lego! Ha, Stevie. What product did the company sell first? Was it tabletop radios or wooden toys? Well, well the transition toys. from wooden toys to That's... plastic blocks feels pretty natural. I mean, we could poke it, but I don't want to waste my poke at this point. I, I'm good at smelling wood. I watched that episode of, yeah. If there's wood in there, I'll smell it. 
I'm pretty positive. Yeah, I don't think we should waste a uh, it is the wooden toys a, a, a lifeline on this one. It's got it. Can't be radios. Come on now. You guys are feeling so confident today. Yes. Founder Ule Kirk Christensen began manufacturing wooden toys. Yes, he did. In 1932, and officially named his company Lego me. in 1935. Oh, I could have totally smelled that. The first plastic bricks weren't even marketed until 1949. These are actual early wooden Lego toys built in the 1940s and 1950s. Wow. No, they're not, um, are they? They are. We we got them off a eBay. The oh, crap. boat, you'll be sad to hear, cost $199. Well, let me see that wooden what, boat. I mean, what if I'd have done something stupid to it before you told me that? I would have felt horrible right now. Hundred and what? Almost $200? Yeah. Like, I don't know, like bid it or, I don't know, <laughs> peed on it or, I don't yeah. know. I don't know what I would have I done. I was thinking about peeing, peeing on this truck. Just drop. <laughs> That's the weird thing. If you like the idea of collecting old vintage collectibles like that, Old wooden boat. Uh, well, it's not exactly Pretty the cool. same thing, but we've got a vintage lunchbox and thermos set that you can only get if you are a Mythical Society third degree member. But you got to join third degree quarterly or annual by March 31st in order to do that, okay? Mythicalsociety.com for details. We should maybe that's, do that's a wooden the, boat. Yeah, we could do that. That's one of the fun things about the Mythical Society is that we get to create collectibles. Yeah, collectibles. Today, we know Samsung for their flat screen TVs, and those with iPhones cringe at the ghastly green messages sent by their cell phones. But way back when, Samsung started by selling something else entirely. Was it fine jewelry or packages of noodles? Either one of these is a little bit unusual, but in jewelry, you're kind of dealing with precious metals already. That in every piece of electronics has some sort of precious metal in yeah, it. Yeah, I and, and many electronics are precious. Um, we could sniff it to make sure there's no ramen in there. We sh I think we should. That's or noodles. Because I at this point I feel like we're going for the clean All right. sweep. All right. Are we yeah. both gonna sniff it. Yeah. Yeah, we can both sniff it. We can both close sniff your it. eyes, open your nose. You smell jewelry. I'm, I'm smelling this. The, smelling the, the box. slight hint of jewelry. I definitely don't smell ramen, so yep. I think jewelry it is, which is mine over here if you want to hand me that flag. Oh, there it is. That is our official answer. Jewelry. Founded in 1938, Samsung Songho was a small business that shipped its own brand of noodles. No! What? to customers in Manchuria and Beijing before expanding into the global electronics giant we all know today. Well, those noodles don't smell like anything. Y'all got, got smellless noodles to trick us. Don't ever do that again. These days, you thank Wrigley for fresh breath and something to chomp on when you're bored. But as it turns out, gum wasn't the first product sold by the mega company. Were those actual first products soap and baking soda or bras and pantyhose? Oh, bras and pantyhose. Chewable underwear. Well, that's, I mean, where did edible underwear come from? You gotta chew it before you can edit. Yeah. <laughs> um... I mean, we could we could sniff to see if it's underwear. No, we can't sniff it because we use this. Oh shoot! We can poke it's it. Not, not that I like to sniff, but you kind of do. I didn't say that. <laughs> we could poke it. Um, Nothing like poking underwear. Okay, baking soda and soap move to gum. Not that big of a transition. Bras and pantyhose. Like, why do you want to go from like trying to secure body parts? to then, hey, have some gum. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the logic there? I can't, I can't come up with any connection. Do we want, I mean, do we want to use the poke it? Stick it? Let's poke it. All right. Just one poke. One poke. Three, two, one. Okay. Feels like I mean, you. that's hard. That's, I mean, unless that's pantyhose that feels like. I might've done two touches. A box. Uh, I think baking soda and soap it is, right? Yes, yes, yes. It's gotta be. William Wrigley Jr. started his company in Chicago in 1891 selling soap and baking soda. Yeah, he did. We poked you, man. Oh, <laughs> free. It's vintage, dude. This well, is this Listen is to this. Stuff. Free gum was offered with his products to entice customers, and soon the gum itself became the company's main draw. Mm. Uh, so it's like yes. baseball cards being offered with free gum. That free gum was a thing back in the day. Scour yeah. and polish. This is 
a real bar of Wrigley's mineral scouring soap from the 1890s. So that. please do not pee on it. Today, we all know Nintendo as the king of video games. However, long before siblings were fighting gladiator style over who got to play Mario and who got to play Luigi, what product did they sell first? Bamboo mahjong sets or playing cards? Uh, I mean, playing cards is kind of boring. I, I mean, I say you got the thing. I, I'm going to vote for the for the bamboo mahjong set. But you have a metal detector over there. <laughs> we got to use it at some point. But neither one of these things would be metal. Right. So uh, it's just 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 so feel like we're, yeah it's a little bit closer to I think they're baiting us you know what but I think they're doing that to bait us so let's switch it on them to playing cards yes I like the way you think man yeah we think ha you think you can you we think got you can outsmart us <laughs> you think oh let's put the they don't even know how to say this they'll definitely think it's Nintendo go ahead Steve we're not idiots while Nintendo did eventually market mahjong sets they began by manufacturing Japanese playing cards oh, in oh, Kyoto we were, oh, in 1889 is this is this the real deal Yes, it is. Okay, Nintendo Dang, eventually we're, we're expanded to manufacture some old vintage stuff. Other games in 1963, and finally arcade machines in 1974. Oh, feel, feel how hard they are. We, we might need to open our own like eBay business. Look, uh, yeah, let's start an eBay store oh, and are, get all the good ratings. These are cool. I'm oh. gonna get a 99.9 .9 score. We've already won, but there's plenty more to learn, right, Stevie? Of course, always. Speaking of eBay, which you did in yep. the last round, that's what I'm gonna use as my transition. Oh, nice. Yep. Throwback transition. eBay is now the place to buy virtually everything your little heart desires. It had to start somewhere. Back when it was known as Auction Web. Oh, yeah, I was a big fan then. What was the first product eBay ever sold? Was it a broken laser pointer or a Kermit the Frog bobblehead? Huh. Well, the broken laser pointer that is so strange. specific and weird, and who would buy it? Why would that be the first thing to like launch a business? I mean, so th this th the frog of the of Kermit variety. Yeah, right. You know, that's how they say it. it that's it, how it was described on auction web. It says it. It says to the world, we're collectibles. And you also have the metal detector. You want? To, let's. Use and it. I don't think it can detect Kermit, but it can detect a laser pointer. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, hold on, Link. There's metal on the corners of oh, this box. Uh, oh, okay. So what if you... Here, you try, right? Nothing in the middle? Reach around the front. All right. This is leading me to believe that it's it's got to be the Kermit. Okay. Because it bobbles without the use well, of... It, hold on, it just detected the air. There's metal here in this air. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> it's suspicious. Whoa. There's metal in the air. I don't think we should be breathing this air. Okay, you sticking with Kermit? Turn it off. It's got a switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're Kermit. sticking with Kermit. Uh, Kermit, Kermit. The first ever item sold on eBay was a broken laser pointer. Why? And this is the lucky guy who purchased it. There's a photo. This is Mark Frazier. He's and like, it's, he, um, it's not a vape. <laughs> he bought it for fourteen eighty three back in nineteen ninety five, and I guess that at the time laser pointers were over a hundred dollars. Yep. So he was thinking, I'll just get this broken one and fix it. Oh, but why would that be the first thing? And why is the picture framed to emphasize that wreath? Well, because it's a beautiful wreath. It's a beautiful wreath. Matches his shirt. So guys, even Isn't though it? you got that last one wrong, I do believe you won the game, which yeah, means you each get a framed photo of your first win. And again, we'll probably hear about this in the comment section, but we went back to what we thought your first win was you based you on like as well too. Oh. You points and, and stuff. Your first win, Rhett, was season three, episode 20, Walmart brand versus name brand, taste mm. test, the game. And oh. Lynx was season three, episode 40, took you 20 episodes, the super word game of abbreviations. But I haven't lost since. Haven't lost a game since. That's the story of Link Neal. Thanks for subscribing and clicking that bell. You know what time it is. What's up, Mythical Beast? Brock here from Defiance, Ohio. In my semi, in the snow getting ready to unload. And it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. I'm glad he wasn't moving. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, once he's like, I'm stationary right now. <laughs> Click the top link to watch us guess what weird first job our mythical crew members had in Go Mythical More. And to find out where the wheel of mythicality is gonna land. 
Get the latest quarterly collectible item, the Mythical Snackiverse Lunchbox and Thermos Set by joining the Mythical Society 3rd Degree Quarterly or Annual Plan by March 31st. Visit mythicalsociety.com.